Hello and welcome to lesson 18, which is all about London's changing ethnicity and population structure. First of all, let's look at London's changing ethnicity. We need to realise that ethnicity is all about the category of people who identify with each other based on common language, culture, or nationality. So an example would be Nigerians living in London. They have a shared language, shared culture, and shared nationality. Or same with the Tamil population of London. They have a, a shared language, culture, and nationality. Secondly, Ethnic diversity is the range of ethnic groups or the amount of ethnic groups living in a place. So London can be described as being ethnically diverse as there are so many ethnic groups living in the capital city. So the task for your independent work will be this, to do with this part of uh, this lesson, is to be able to explain why London's ethnic diversity has changed and that means you've got to give reasons for it and we'll look at those reasons. So let's look at uh, two main reasons though for the, the reason why the ethnic diversity has changed. And we have to really go back to 1948. Before that point, obviously three years before then, the Second World War had finished. But at this stage, London, in fact, the whole of the country was very, very white. White British was the dominant ethnic group in the country. There weren't very many brown faces or black faces. It was just literally white people everywhere. And if you look at any old videos of, of London, you will see that everyone's white. The big change happened when this boat arrived. This was called the Empire Windrush. And this brought the first groups of West Indians to the UK. These people were actually part of the, the British Empire. At the time our empire was still in place it was still called the empire and uh, after the war finished we needed people to come to work in the country and rebuild our economy and help us to become stronger and so the uk opened up our economy and uh, opened up our jobs market to people from all around the empire now this quickly changed to become the commonwealth the british commonwealth is the name given to all the countries uh, who were once part of the uh, the empire. So the British Empire became known as the British Commonwealth. And then we had lots of people from the Caribbean, but also South Asia, for example, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, uh, who came to the UK. Uh, lots of black uh, Jamaicans um, and, Caribbean, and people from the Caribbean came. And then lots of brown Asians from South Asia came. So this is where, where our ethnic uh, 
uh, diversity change from not being just white to being brown and black. There were some rules initially to try to restrict this growth, but basically the rules trying to change and, and, and to slow this flow of migrants didn't really work. So London became increasingly um, ethnically diverse throughout the 1950s and 60s. And that really just carried on and has built ever since every decade. There have been more people continue to flow from South Asia and from the Caribbean to, uh, to London. Uh, that also includes Africans as well. Uh, obviously, uh, Nigeria was once a British colony, part of the empire, uh, and it's also a Commonwealth country. So we have lots of Nigerians. Uh, we also have lots of Sri Lankans because Sri Lanka used to be a, uh, a part of the, the empire. It was called Ceylon. And therefore we have lots of Sri Lankans who are uh, Commonwealth citizens who want to come to live in London. So really, if you look at the, the, the picture of London, you can see a real Commonwealth signature of the ethnicity in London. Now, the next big change, a big reason was Eastern Europe. Um, now, in 2004, there were 10 countries which joined the EU. And at the time, we were an EU member state. And here are the 10. So you've got Lithuania, Lithuania, Estonia and Latvia. And you have Poland, the Czech Republic, etc. Slovakia, you have Cyprus and Malta. So these 10 countries, they joined the EU and the whole EU became uh, sort of further east. It grew into eastwardly. Well, this resulted in a huge flow of Eastern Europeans because initially only three countries, the UK, Ireland and Sweden allowed these people to work. So lots of people, especially Polish, but also lots of Lithuanians came to live and work in the UK. A few years later, the EU relaxed their rules. And so people from Eastern Europe could go anywhere into the country, into the EU. So this has changed uh, the London has changed the whole country, but London especially has been changed by these two flows from the Commonwealth in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and Eastern Europe in the 2000s and 2010s. So this pie chart shows us uh, some of the impact of, of these changes. Uh, this blue section is the population from uh, who were born in London and born in the UK. Now, these people, well, some of these people will be white British, but a lot of these people in this blue part of the cake, the pie chart, will be people who are second generation immigrants, third generation immigrants. So they won't all be white British. And if you look here, you can see some interesting things. Here are the Indians, the largest ethnic group in London after the, non, the, after the white British. Then you've got the Polish. In fact, if you look here, Indians biggest, then Poles, Bangladeshis, third biggest, Romanians, they joined the EU in 2007. Pakistanis, that's Commonwealth. Let's just go back to look at these. So here we have India, that's Commonwealth. Poland, that's 2004 EU expansion. Bangladesh, Commonwealth, 1950s. Romania, EU expansion, 2007. Pakistan, Commonwealth. Nigeria, Commonwealth. Italy, EU. So you can sort of see a pattern. And if you look here, there's actually, I haven't counted these up, looks like about 20 ethnic groups where with significant populations. And then there's the rest. These are other countries. Uh, so really, you can see that London is a very, very globalized city in terms of its population and ethnic mix. It's incredibly diverse. And that's part of the attraction of London as well. The fact that it has become a bit like New York, it's become a melting pot of different ethnic uh, and ethnicities, ethnic groups.
So here are some interesting facts about this actually, because we've got lots of people coming in. In fact, look at this from 2009 to 28 to 2017. So this is over an eight year period. The population of London increased by almost one million people, half coming from the EU and the rest coming from outside the EU, which will be predominantly from Commonwealth countries. The fact that in 2017, 3.6 million people living in London were born overseas gives you an idea of the scale of the size of these flows of migrants coming to London. There's huge flows coming into London. There are 8.7 million Londoners, which means 4.9 million Londoners were born in the UK. So it's a really large amount of people born overseas. So that's that's a net migration figure. More people coming in than leaving. Positive net migration. But there's negative net migration of UK born Londoners with half a million leaving London. If we have a look at this here again, this is just more facts. Uh, this shows you two colours here. So look down here, you've got blue, which is 2007, and then you've got orange, which is 2016. So these are nine years apart. This is a comparative bar chart, a horizontal comparative bar chart. It's, it's a, an important and very well used, often used data presentation technique in geography. It shows us change or comparing between two different times, which is change. So if you look at India, Indians 2007 is the past. Indians increased hugely. Polish people increased hugely in 10 years, nine years. Bangladeshi a little bit more. Romanians increased hugely because this the blue bar was small and then the orange bar is much bigger. Italians also increased. Here are some interesting facts then, which I have pulled out and extracted by reading the graph. Indians have gone up. So there's something like 65,000 more Indians in nine years. Poles, well, that went up by about 80,000. Romanians went up by 90,000. Interestingly, some ethnic groups have actually decreased. So Irish people, they've actually gone down by 25,000. And that is probably because the Irish economy has been picking up and growing strongly and therefore might be more attractive for economic migrants to return there. Uh, those are people who are returning for work. This map is, uh, this is not really part of the, the, the question. It's just interesting to show the spatial pattern of where these migrants live. And you can see that this is the uh, the dominant nationality after being UK citizens. So Bromley is the second biggest ethnic group are Indians. Nigerians are the second biggest ethnic group in Bexley. Anna Greenwich, Jamaicans are the biggest ethnic group in number 23, which is Lewisham. The Sri Lankans and mostly Tamils are the biggest ethnic group in, in Kingston and 29, 29 is and Sutton as well. The Americans live around Kensington, loads of Indians up in northwest London, the Turks and Turkish people live in north and what's this one here? Pakistanis are living mostly in 31 in Walton Forest and the Bangladeshis are living around the city of London and Canary Wharf area, which is number 30. Number 30 is Tower Hamlets. Now, this is actually a really interesting website. It's called Tube Tongues, and it shows you the second largest ethnic group after white British by tube station. So you can see here that the Bengalis or Bangladeshis are a large ethnic group through the Isle of Dogs around 
Canary Wharf. Lithuanians live around London City Airport and Excel. Chinese live around Greenwich. So it's really interesting. And Nepalese, there's a Nepalese community which is somewhere down near Woolwich. Fascinating. Obviously, that's only where the tube stations are, so we can't find out what's happening down here away from the tube lines, but still it's quite a nice map which shows ethnic diversity. Just a few things here. This shows language and language is one measure of ethnicity because it's a shared trait between people. Here's a few things. You've got Bengali speakers in London. There's lots of Bangladeshi people which we talked, talked about before, which is around the Canary Wharf. And London is the sixth biggest French city in the world because it's got so many French people that live here, which isn't surprising because France is next door to us. OK, right, the second part of this lesson is looking at London's changing population structure. So this task will be to explain why London's population structure has changed. What are the reasons? You have to explain the reasons and show understanding of the reasons. So to help us, just I just want to recap on what population structure means. It's the proportion or percentage of a population in different age groups. The main age groups are the under 16s, the young dependent population. The 16 to 65s, which is the, are the economically active population. And then finally, the over 65s, which are the, is the old dependent population. And population structure is best shown or best seen on a population pyramid. And down here, you've got your young dependents. Here, you've got your economically active. And up here, you've got your elderly dependent population. So on most population pyramids, you should be able to see, and if not see, you need to put it in there, in your mind at least, the line, the 65 line, which is dividing between the economically active and the elderly dependents, and also the 16 year old line, which divides the young dependents from the economically active population. So we can see here, this is a graph uh, and actually an animated population pyramid for London. And if you look down at the bottom here, you can see the year 2001 up to 2016. Uh, and you can see how there are some changes in the shape. So there's a big bulge of people around 29 years old around there. It's very difficult to see the change there, but there are some changes. And we'll have a look at those soon. It's also quite hard to see the amount of young dependents changing, but it looks like there's an increase down here going on, which is increase of births. You can see up here, these are little spikes from the, uh, the post-war baby boom, children that were born in 1943, getting older and older. That's what's happening there. But really, I think we can safely say that there isn't a lot of change in the actual structure by looking at the population pyramid. 2001. So let's have a look at this. London's population change. Well, the economy expanded by a fifth, obviously, with coronavirus. Uh, all these stats uh, will change. But um, London's population increased by 1 million, up to 10 million people. Um, and the internal growth, so remember the growth happens from migration, from inward migration, but also from internal growth, which is where births are higher than deaths. Anyway, this graph actually shows us the change because we couldn't really see it on the population pyramid. This is a sort of population pyramid, but on its side, uh, you've got here, you've got children. Here are your young dependents. Here are your economically active. And here are your old dependents. 
And rather than having male and female separated, we here we just have um, the bars for uh, for male and female. And this is to show the difference in population because there weren't lots of differences we could see, so we have to present the data in a different format to be able to bring out the differences. And on this x, sorry, this y-axis, we have increase, which is in blue, and decrease in red. So basically, interestingly, in London, we've got children are leaving. Obviously, the children aren't packing up their suitcases and going to the train stations. They're leaving with their parents. This massive spike here of 18 year olds is when young people are leaving London to study universities in other parts of the country. These are the 20 year olds, the 20 somethings, who are actually the only group coming into London um, in terms of net figures. And then when they get older and they have their own children, and in their 30s and 40s, they actually leave London to raise their families in quieter places. So if you like, these people are coming to London, migrating to London, get a good job, get a good wage, uh, have a family, and then they, they move out of London to, to maybe still have their jobs, still commute into London, but actually enjoy more peaceful, less hectic uh, lifestyles outside of the capital. Um, now, this graph shows you net figures, it's net migration, and this is not talking about necessarily about international, but this is mostly national data, but it's net figures. So yes, you've got people, you've got children and their families moving in, but on net figures, more move out than move in, more young people leave London to go to university, then come into London, interestingly. More 20 year olds come into London than leave. But from 30s onwards, more people are leaving London than moving to London. Uh, this could be because of the high house prices in London, which are exceptionally high. And we had a look at this earlier in the course. So just to conclude that graph, the young Domestic, which means they were born in, in the UK, they're, they're British people. It's national migration. So young national migrants move to London. They're coming from all across the country for jobs. The 30 somethings are leaving. They're young families, they're moving out of the capital. They're in search of homes which are cheaper than London's higher house prices, but they stay close enough to be able to commute to London by train. And then we have and these people, they've left London, but every day they come back into the city to work and then leave at night time. So two thirds of those 30 somethings are still in the Southeast or the greater southeast, but we've got now almost a million people that commute to London every day. This map shows us two things really. It shows us green and red. So green, let's have a look at this one here. This is the sort of bigger lines. This shows you where the 20 year olds migrate from. This is the flow into London. So you've got Welsh coming to London to, to work. You've got people from Oxford, from the West Midlands, from the northwest of England, from up in the northeast. Young people who are moving to London for better opportunities, better jobs. That's green. Down here are the flows out. These are the people that are probably the 30 year olds or older who lived in London, but are moving out. So they're not moving very, very far because they are moving out to to uh, to live uh, in a quieter place and then commute into London. So these people have to be close enough to get into London by train.